Hey everyone, Vinayak here. I have here with me AMD's new 9000 series CPU, namely the Ryzen 9 9900X. The 9900X uses AMD's Zen 5 architecture and has 12 cores and 24 threads. This is a step below AMD's 9950X, so how well does it perform? Watch on to find out. Today's build is around AMD's Ryzen 9 9900X, which is one of their flagship processors from the 9000 series. It comes with 12 cores and 24 threads, has a base clock of 4.4 GHz. The 9900X is manufactured using TSMC's 4 nanometer process for their compute dies. LGA or LAN grid array interface on the back, so all the pins are now on the motherboard instead. Motherboard, we have the ASUS Prime X870P Wi-Fi, the latest motherboard available for AM5 CPUs. Cooling, we have the MSI Mag Core Liquid M360 and AIO with a 360mm radiator. The cooler is AM5 and LGA1700 compatible and it's RGB too. To power everything, we have the Mag A1000G which has ATX 3.0 compatibility. So if you have a GPU that needs this connector, the PCU has it natively. RAM is the G-Skill Trident Z TDR5 RAM which is running at 6000 megatransfers per second. And here's the case. This is MSI's MPG Gungnir 300R Airflow case. It's a massive case making it easy to install in. It comes with 4 fans pre-installed and also has a GPU retention bracket. Now let's start building. We have the motherboard here, massive silver heat sinks over the VRMs, 8 pin power connectors are here, 2 covered M.2 slots and 2 are open. This is the chipset heat sink, PCIe into 16 slot with reinforcement and a novel way to eject your GPU. This is the old way and this is the new one. Your fingers will thank you. Integrated rear I.O. shield with a decent array of ports. As the newer AM5 CPUs have integrated graphics, we have a HDMI out too. Two USB-C ports and a 2.5 gig network port can also be found here. We have a BIOS flashback button here. We also have two SATA ports. Here's the backplate. And now let's start the CPU installation. Being AM5, the pins are now on the motherboard. Insert CPU. Close down the latch and this cover, keep it carefully. Now for RAM, make sure to install it in the right slots. It's 1 and 3 or 2 and 4. If you have only 2 modules, 2 and 4 is recommended initially. Now the cooler. Install the AMD AM5 bracket onto the pump. Install the fans onto the radiator. We are ready. Install motherboard into the case. Screw it down. I need to remove the default mounting brackets. Now to install the cooler mounts. Next is thermal paste and I'm using the Cooler Master Master Gel regular. Mount the pump and screw it down. Corners first and then tighten them all down. Now for the radiator, I'm installing it on the top in exhaust config. Power supply, this is a 80 plus gold 1000 watt PSU. We have the cables. And this is the native 600 watt cable for GPUs. Now I'm installing the cables first, then I'll attach them to the PSU. This is the plus point of a modular PSU. Done. Here's the on off switch and zero fan switch. Hit the power button and it's on. I'm installing the AMD Radeon 7900 XT in this build. Benchmark Cinebench gets a healthy 2234 points in single core and 31316 points in multi core tests. Time Spy Extreme we get 12522, just a little lower than the 7950X's 12886. Fire Strike we get 17073 against 17163 on the 7950X. Port Real has a score of 14123. Metro Exodus we get a max frame rate of 244.68 at 1080p with the average being 166.94. 1440p we get a high of 94.74 and average of, of 67.68 fps. 4k max we get 54.45 fps and average of 38.65 fps. Shadow of the Tomb Raider we have 118 fps in 4k, 208 fps in 1440p and 239 fps in 1080p. Forza 4 we have 196 fps in 4k, 268 fps in 1440p and 297 fps in 1080p. 
Premier render speeds are rendered a 4K timeline and we have the 7950X taking 3 minutes 15 seconds to render the timeline. 9900X took 4 minutes 56 seconds and as compared to the 5800X which took 7 minutes 51 seconds. Times the CPU stayed at a cool 66 degrees centigrade. The CPU also has a feature which allows parking one of the CCDs if load is low, maybe like browsing, streaming, video, etc. and also gaming to keep the latency between the CCDs to a minimum. The Ryzen 9 CPUs are designed for complex workstation class workloads which it manages to crunch through easily. Power wise the Ryzen 9 9900X is rated for 120 watt TDP which is low considering the performance it promises the socket can still pull up to 160 watts if necessary. Temperatures are also surprising with the CPU hitting a max of 66 degrees when under load. Video encoding, file compression, decompression, 3D rendering, the 9900X is a beast due to the advancements in Zen 5 architecture. AMD has done an amazing job balancing efficiency and performance, something that workstation users would love. We have the option of untethering the CPU's power limit using PBO, but that can void your warranty, so be careful there. It does help, but not by much, so it's best not to enable PBO. The X3D variant of the 9000 series chips might be released next year, which would bring about more performance for gamers, but for workstation class tasks, the 9900X and the 9950X will not disappoint. So should you get one? If you are on the 7000 series AMD processors, I would say wait. But if you are using the 3000 or 5000 series CPUs, then definitely this would be a big upgrade. It's a solid offering from AMD and I'm looking forward to their X3D lineup, which might release soon. So what do you guys think? Make sure to comment below. Also make sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added. Thank you for watching and see you all next time.